SpaceX's Starship lifted off on its fourth test flight today, June 6th, at 7.50 a.m. Central, 8.50 a.m. Eastern Time. But was it successful? Let's break down what happened and then I will tell you my thoughts. Launch was delayed by about 50 minutes, but the countdown proceeded as expected. And right at 7.50 a.m. Central Time, that rocket lifted off. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Everything went smoothly during launch. One of the Raptor engines went out about three seconds after launch, and there were some other fiddly Raptor engines, but overall it didn't seem to affect the launch at all. Stage separation went well, and we saw the super heavy booster jettison the hot staging ring. This was expected, and it was to reduce mass during re-entry in order to help achieve that controlled splashdown of the super heavy booster. Super Heavy conducted its boost back burn and then began its descent back to the Earth's surface. It looks like all the engines did fire for the landing burn properly, and Super Heavy successfully made a controlled landing into the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, Starship continued to ascend and coast during its suborbital flight. We did lose the video feed for a while, but everything looked good. Towards the end of the coast phase, we started seeing plasma from the heat of the Earth's atmosphere building up around the ship. I said this during the third flight test, but the views we get from Starship launches and re-entry are just unreal. The re-entry phase started and we really began seeing the stress of re-entry heat and pressure on the vehicle. As the ship went through max heating and max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle, we saw the ship begin to come apart. SpaceX had previously been concerned about heating on the flaps, and we saw the flap on the camera basically begin to break off the vehicle. There were chunks flying around. But it was very impressive that it actually stayed attached and continued to work throughout the flight. At one point, the camera cracked and enough stuff built up on the camera, so our views became sort of interrupted, but it's shocking that the video feed continued to transmit and we were able to see a little here and there all the way through splashdown. It's amazing that the cameras lasted like that. The reason we were able to have continuous video is because there were Starlink terminals aboard Starship. And honestly, this is the best advertisement for Starlink that they could ever hope for. This is an animation from SpaceX on what the landing burn is supposed to look like. The ship comes down on its belly through the atmosphere like the space shuttle did, and then at the last minute fires a landing burn to turn upright. Well, as the ship was approaching the ocean, honestly, I didn't think the landing burn was going to fire. I was shocked it did. It's not 100% clear if all the engines fired, but it looks like they did. They wouldn't have been able to do what I talked about next without at least two of the three engines firing. According to telemetry and data we got from the vehicle, it looks like Starship, or whatever was left of it by that point, did the flip maneuver, turned upright, and actually did make a soft vertical splashdown in the Indian Ocean. I said earlier this week in my video about this mission that SpaceX really needed to figure out the controlled landing of Super Heavy and the re-entry of Starship for me to consider this flight a success. I also talked in that video about why I judge these test flights of Starship differently than operational flights, so check that out, especially if you want to complain that I'm being too soft on them. I was fully prepared, fully prepared, to get on video today and talk about how this test flight was a failure because SpaceX has contractual commitments and obligations with NASA and private organizations to use Starship in the near future and they just weren't making enough progress. But they did it. They didn't execute every part of it perfectly. It's unclear what shape Starship was in when it hit the water. They once again lost a lot of heating tiles and they really need to figure this out. The ship was clearly disintegrating on the way down, but it was successful as a test flight. I'm actually super impressed here. I feel like half the population wants me to get up here and rip apart SpaceX. The other half wants me to fangirl them on. I judge their successes and failures based on my extensive knowledge and experience as a journalist covering the space industry, the same way I would evaluate any other company or organization attempting to do this. And I do think this was an incredible success. They achieved so much during this one flight. 
So what's next? Well, the fact that SpaceX did accomplish a successful controlled splashdown of Super Heavy and a successful controlled splashdown of Starship means that it's possible they will be able to turn around for the next test flight even more quickly. It is unclear whether the FAA will even need to open a routine mishap investigation here. Even if they do, it's likely going to be a quicker licensing process for the next flight. As far as objectives for the next test flight, they may try to recover one or both of the stages. They may even try to land Super Heavy back at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. It's also important to note that this was a suborbital flight. We don't know what condition the ship was in, but we do know it survived in some manner the re-entry heating from a suborbital flight. Orbital velocity is a completely different story. And they still need to figure out that heat tiles issue, though I'm guessing they've gotten some really good data from this flight. They intentionally removed some of the heat tiles from non-critical areas of Starship to more closely examine re-entry heating. The success of this test flight is good news for the space industry. Even if you don't like SpaceX, which I do understand, they're critical to the industry right now. NASA's goal is to land humans on the moon is dependent on SpaceX. All kinds of things when it comes to low Earth orbit and exploring space are dependent on Starship. I was really glad to see them succeed today, and I am looking forward to seeing what they do for that next test flight. And that's about all I have to tell you about this test flight of Starship. Thanks for watching. I'm Swapna Krishna, and this is Ad Astra.